Yo, what's up people? Talk guys back with another video. Today's video, I'll be ranking every single Mythic Brawler in Solo Showdown. So as you can see on my Brawler page, I've got every single Rank 35 Mythic Brawler, so I've got a fair bit of knowledge. And last on our list, we have Tara. I'll be going over some reasons why Tara isn't that great, and tips and tricks to playing Tara in Solo Showdown. So for the first reason why she's 6th on the list in the Mythic Rarity Brawler list is because her range isn't the best so it's very hard to get in range of people and attack them because a lot of brawlers can just outrange her and that's not really good for Solo Showdown. The second reason why she's not that great in Solo Showdown is because it takes a really long time to charge her super as well. So her main attack is pretty hard to land all three tarot cards onto an opponent unless you're very close to them, which is very rare in Solo Showdown. So the way you do want to play Tara is just attack from a distance and chip over time and try to charge the super. When you get your super with Tara, it becomes really game changing because you can just apply pressure on brawlers without even using the super. Just being next to brawlers and having your super but not even using it will scare brawlers away. So that's the first thing you want to do with Tara, is just maintain your distance and charge your super at the beginning. The second good thing about Tara is her super. So once you obtain your super, it's very good for applying pressure on brawlers without even using it. Or when you do use it, it's very easy to get a kill. So over here you can see I've charged my super and I'm looking to use it on this Leon. So I'll just wait for him to get in range. And I'll just use it right here and bam, he's gone just like that. Another good thing about Tara is her gadget. So it's really good for um, scouting bush campers or anyone just in nearby bushes. It can really come handy in some situations where you just don't know where anyone is and you need to know where they are. So you can just scout out people, push people out of a bush and then you can control that bush like I did in this mid bush. And another good thing about Tara is her healing shade which actually got buffed where it follows you now so it will stay really close by. The good thing about this is it will get killed less, so less people will be in range and be able to kill it as much. Our next brawler on the list is number 5, Sprout. So the reason being why Sprout is not that great in Solo Showdown is because he's very vulnerable. So it's very easy to just get in range of him and just kill him. A good thing about him is his second star power, which provides a lot of shield reduction. All you have to do is get into a bush and then that shield will activate itself. But the thing with Sprout is if anyone gets really close to him, it just becomes really like hard to hit any of your shots on them. Because he's really not that good close range. Unless there's like walls nearby that you can rebound off. But even then like, it's really hard to hit your shots still. Another bad thing about Sprout in Solo Showdown is he lacks health. And without bushes and his second star power, he just becomes very squishy. Plus he barely deals that much damage, so it's very hard to get a definite kill on someone. You can get someone pretty low, but it's very hard to confirm a kill. So those are the reasons why Sprout's not that great in Solo Showdown. Some good things about him is his second star power, obviously, which provides a shield reduction. And his gadget, which heals 2k HP. That can come very clutch sometimes. The gadget plus the second star power provides a lot of health for Sprout. Even though he's very squishy, he can heal a lot, which is really good for him. Another good thing about Sprout is his walls, obviously. So his super can block off enemies that come really close in contact. So he's got a lot of good defense options. Also, Sprout's main attack, Trajectory Bounce, goes a far way, which is very good as well. So if you bounce it off walls, it actually lasts longer and travels a further distance so that can be beneficial as well so all of these things about Sprout made me put him higher than Tara on the list number four on the mythic list is Mr. P so the problems he faces during showdown is he lacks health so he can get taken down very easily Another bad thing about him is it takes him a while to charge his super, which is very much needed. Some good things about him is he's got really long range, so he can charge his super quite efficiently. It still takes a while, but at least he's got the range to actually hit people. 
So the way you want to play him in showdown is just attack from a distance and charge up that super gradually, just like Tara. Because once you have that super, it becomes game changing. So he's a very super dependent brawler as well. Once you drop the super down, he becomes a lot stronger. And you always want to place it behind walls or places where brawlers can't get to. And what you want to do is just follow the Porter Penguins around and apply pressure on the brawlers that it's chasing. So the Porters can help get brawlers low and also serve as defense, so that's quite helpful. And it's very easy to charge your super again once you lose your Porter. Because with the Penguins, they can just charge super as well, plus you're charging super with your main attack at the same time. And you can also use the portal as defense, so if someone's getting really close to you, you can just drop it in front of you and it will just activate as a shield. But never do this in front of like, brawlers that can shoot through it or like a penny obviously. And other good things about Mr. P is he can shoot over walls, so whenever someone's on the other side of a wall, you can just attack them as well. So he's very good for doing that. Also another good thing about Mr. P is his gadget, so whenever the Mr. P Porter goes low, the penguins, you can just activate the gadget and it will just go straight to full health. So that's really good for um, applying pressure on people and just getting people off you. So people will just focus the Mr. P Porter instead of you a lot of the time when you can just activate the gadget. Also another thing I like to do with Mr. P is drop another super down whenever I pick up power cubes because it increases the health on the Mr. P Porter and the penguins. So that can be very good as well. Number three on the list would have to be Mortis and the problem with him is tanks can really counter him and he doesn't do well against tanks at all. So you're going to have to avoid him for majority of the game. And yes, I'm using the Gold Mortis. I like the addition with the glow. It looks very cool. But yeah, Mortis is a mediocre pick for Showdown because he's just got way too many counters, which are all the tanks. The way I like to play him is by using my gadgets early game and charging as much super as I can and going for squishier brawlers. Brawlers I know that can't take me down. And another really good thing about Mortis is he's got a lot of mobility, so he can move really fast and also his main attacks just like really good for getting away. So if you want to play a passive Mortis in solo showdown, all you have to do is just run away and avoid getting hit by brawlers and just avoid getting pinches as well. So there's a lot of situations where you can get of problems in showdown with Mortis, so that's why I put him high on the list. Because his mobility is just off the charts. And if you're looking to play a more aggro version of Mortis, you just want to go for brawlers you know you can take down like Penny, Nita, Poco, anything that deals low damage and has low health. So once you take him out, you can just charge your super and once you have your super it's very useful because it can save you from dying and it's very easy to just chain the super. Another good thing about Mortis which goes back to his mobility is the way he can just dodge opponents very easily. So he's got fast movement speed, plus he's got the dash, so it's very easy to just dodge opponents as long as you're doing it in the right way. And he's also really good for just applying pressure to brawlers he counters. So this bee over here, I'm just applying pressure, making sure she doesn't come down. Over up there, I see a Shelly that counters me, so I don't want to stay close to that Shelly, I've got to watch out. And in this game, I just... Uh, push the B up by doing nothing just by standing behind the wall and she dies to the poison because she doesn't want to go in on the Shelly. So right now I'm versing one of the biggest counters which is Shelly and I'm just trying to bait her attack out by going in and out of the wall and she's not really attacking so I'm just gonna have to make a move and I take all the bush space up so I make sure to attack her and I'm just super. Moving on, number two on the list we have Jean. Jean's quite good in showdown believe it or not. So he's got really good range. He lacks a bit of damage, which is fine, but he's got lots of range, and his reload speed is quite slow, so that's also a disadvantage, but he's got one of the longest range in the game, so you can use that to your advantage and just keep a lot of distance, and you can just chip other players from far away, and most of the time it will hit, so that's a good part about Gene. And the super takes a while to charge, but like most of the time, your attacks are going to land anyway, so you will charge that eventually. 
Once I do charge my super, I want to make sure I get the pool 100%. So I like to go for squishy brawlers as well, because I know I can take them out. So over here, I see an opportunity. I'll go for a blind pool there, and because he's low, I can just take him out. Also, if a brawler is really close to you, you can just auto-aim the pool, and most of the time it will land. But you don't want to be auto-aiming your pool when an opponent is in a bush or anything like that, because it will just miss completely. And with the second star power, I like to hold my super sometimes, depending on the situation. So I can't pull this Rosa, so I'm just going to hold onto my super and I'll do more damage over time as well. And over there, the gadget's really good for getting brawlers off you that come really close to you. That's also really helpful. And that's why Gene's quite decent in Showdown. Another really good thing about Gene is his first super takes a long time to charge, but after that it becomes really easy to just cycle your supers. As long as you land the pool, you can just 3 tap them and then recharge another super, and that's really beneficial. So over there I 2 tap the Colette, which means I'm only one full shot from getting my super, which is quite close. And I'm going to pinch the Rosa because... The Rose is the bigger threat and he's got control of the whole center. So I'm not teaming with this Kyle, but I am helping with the pinch because the Rose is the bigger threat. Over here, Rose is going to chase the Carl. I can just super the Rosa and kill him and then I can just kill the Carl. Looks like the Carl's just going to give up though. Now, finally onto number one on the list. It has to be Max by far and there's many reasons why. She hardly has any weaknesses, and she has to be like a top 3 brawler out of all the rarities in Solo Showdown. So the first reason why she's so good is she can just deal so much damage in short bursts of time. So she's got 4 ammo slots, plus she deals quite a fair bit of damage. And second reason why her gadget's really OP, she can just go invincible for a certain amount of time and also dash away. As you can see in this clip, I dodged the Frank super just like that with ease. And third reason why she's so good is her super which provides even more mobility than she already has. So originally she does have a lot of mobility and even with the super she gets even more. So that makes her even stronger. So with the super she can rush in on players or just run away as well. I like to use the first star power because the second one got nerfed and I can just chain supers one after another. So if I use a super I can just rush in on someone and then I'll charge another one. As long as I hit my shots which I'm not doing in this clip right now. If you have either star power on you want to keep yourself moving all the time because that charges your super or your reload speed. So you always want to be moving and just not stopping anytime. Over here I'm just going to rush the Gale because he gets quite close and I can just kill him off. Yeah, but you always want to be moving, even if you want to camp in a bush for a bit, you want to be moving in the bush as well because that's going to charge your super. And if you're using the reload speed, then it wouldn't really matter if you're bush camping. But yeah, Max is going to be the best brawler for sure in the Mythic rarity, especially if you can play her right. And she's one of the best showdown overall brawlers, so if you get good at her, then... She's going to be one of the best brawlers you can play. If you did like this tier list video, then be sure to subscribe and like. And I will definitely be covering more videos like this on different rarities and different topics.